Welcome to part 2 of Wing Configurations and Wing Structures. In this lesson we will talk about wing skin, nasals and impenage. If you like our lessons don't forget to support us by liking the video and subscribe to our channel so you stay tuned and notified about new videos. Thank you. Wing Skin Often, the skin on a wing is designed to carry part of the flight and ground loads in combination with the spars and ribs. This is known as a stressed skin design. The all-metal, full cantilever wing section illustrated in this figure shows the structure of one such design. The lack of extra internal or external bracing requires that the skin share some of the load. Notice the skin is stiffened to aid with this function. Fuel is often carried inside the wings of a stressed skin aircraft. The joints in the wing can be sealed with a special fuel resistant sealant enabling fuel to be stored directly inside the structure. This is known as wet wing design. Alternately, a fuel carrying bladder or tank can be fitted inside a wing. This figure shows a wing section with a box beam structural design such as one that might be found in a transport category aircraft. This structure increases strength while reducing weight. Proper sealing of the structure allows fuel to be stored in the box sections of the wing. The wing skin on an aircraft may be made from a wide variety of materials such as fabric, wood, or aluminium. But a single thin sheet of material is not always employed. Chemically milled aluminium skin can provide skin of varied thicknesses. On aircraft with stressed skin wing design, honeycomb structured wing panels are often used as skin. A honeycomb structure is built up from a core material resembling a beehive's honeycomb which is laminated or sandwiched between thin outer skin sheets. This figure illustrates honeycomb panes and their components. Panels formed like this are lightweight and very strong. They have a variety of uses on the aircraft, such as floor panels, bulkheads, and control surfaces, as well as wing skin panels. This figure shows the locations of honeycomb construction wing panels on a jet transport aircraft. A honeycomb panel can be made from a wide variety of materials. Aluminium core honeycomb with an outer skin of aluminium is common. But honeycomb in which the core is an aramid fiber and the outer sheets coated phenolic is common as well. In fact, a myriad of other material combinations such as those using fiberglass, plastic, Nomex, Kevlar, and carbon fiber all. Each honeycomb structure possesses unique characteristics depending upon the materials, dimensions, and manufacturing techniques employed. Figure here shows an entire wing leading edge formed from honeycomb structure. Nasals Nasals, sometimes called pods, are streamlined enclosures used primarily to house the engine and its components. They usually present a round or elliptical profile to the wind thus reducing aerodynamic drag. On most single engine aircraft, the engine and nacelle are at the forward end of the fuselage. On mulch engine aircraft, engine nasals are built into the wings or attached to the fuselage at the impenage tail section. Occasionally, a mulch engine aircraft is designed with a nacelle in line with the fuselage aft of the passenger compartment. Regardless of its location, a nacelle contains the engine and accessories, engine mounts, structural members, a firewall, and skin and cowling on the exterior to feather nacelle to the wind. 
Some aircraft have nasals that are designed to house the landing gear when retracted. Retracting the gear to reduce wind resistance is standard procedure on high-performance slash high-speed aircraft. The wheel well is the area where the landing gear is attached and stowed when retracted. Wheel wells can be located in the wings and or fuselage when not part of the nacelle. Figure here shows an engine nacelle incorporating the landing gear with the wheel well extending into the wing root. The framework of a nacelle usually consists of structural members similar to those of the fuselage, lengthwise members, such as longerons and stringers, combine with horizontal, vertical members, such as rings, formers, and bulkheads, to give the nacelle its shape and structural integrity. A firewall is incorporated to isolate the engine compartment from the rest of the aircraft. This is basically a stainless steel or titanium bulkhead that contains a fire in the confines of the nacelle rather than letting it spread throughout the airframe, as shown here. Engine mounts are also found in the nacelle. These are the structural assemblies to which the engine is fastened. They are usually constructed from chrome, molybdenum steel tubing in light aircraft and forged chrome slash nickel slash molybdenum assemblies in larger aircraft. As shown here, the exterior of an SL is covered with a skin or fitted with a cowling which can be opened to access the engine and components inside. Both are usually made of sheet aluminium or magnesium alloy with stainless steel or titanium alloys being used in high temperature areas, such as around the exhaust exit. Regardless of the material used, the skin is typically attached to the framework with rivets. Cowling refers to the detachable panels covering those areas into which access must be gained regularly such as the engine and its accessories. It is designed to provide a smooth airflow over the nacelle and to protect the engine from damage. Cowl panels are generally made of aluminium alloy construction. However, stainless steel is often used as the inner skin aft of the power section and for cowl flaps and near cowl flap openings. It is also used for oil cooler ducts. Cowl flaps are movable parts of the nacelle cowling that open and close to regulate engine temperature. There are many engine cowl designs. This figure shows an exploded view of the pieces of cowling for a horizontally opposed engine on a light aircraft. It is attached to the nacelle by means of screws and or quick release fasteners. Some large reciprocating engines are enclosed by orange peel cowlings which provide excellent access to components inside the nacelle. As shown in this figure these cowl panels are attached to the forward firewall by mounts which also serve as hinges for opening the cowl. The lower cowl mounts are secured to the hinge brackets by quick release pins. The side and top Panels are held open by rods and the lower panel is retained in the open position by a spring and a cable. All of the cowling panels are locked in the closed position by over center steel latches which are secured in the closed position by spring loaded safety catches. An example of a turbojet engine nacelle can be seen in this figure. The cowl panels are a combination of fixed and easily removable panels which can be opened and closed during maintenance. A nose cowl is also a feature on a jet engine nacelle. It guides air into the engine. Empennage. The empennage of an aircraft is also known as the tail section. Most impenage designs consist of a tail cone, fixed aerodynamic surfaces or stabilizers, and movable aerodynamic surfaces. 
The tail cone serves to close and streamline the aft end of most fuselages. The cone is made up of structural members like those of the fuselage, however, cones are usually of lighter construction since they receive less stress than the fuselage, as shown in this figure. The other components of the typical impenage are of heavier construction than the tail cone. These members include fixed surfaces that help stabilize the aircraft and movable surfaces that help to direct an aircraft during flight. The fixed surfaces are the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. The movable surfaces are usually a rudder located at the aft edge of the vertical stabilizer and an elevator located at the aft edge of the horizontal stabilizer. As shown here, the structure of the stabilizers is very similar to that which is used in wing construction. This figure shows a typical vertical stabilizer. Notice the use of spars, ribs, stringers, and skin like those found in a wing. They perform the same functions shaping and supporting the stabilizer and transferring stresses. Bending, torsion, and shear created by air loads in flight pass from one structural member to another. Each member absorbs some of the stress and passes the remainder on to the others. Ultimately, the spar transmits any overloads to the fuselage. A horizontal stabilizer is built the same way. The rudder and elevator are flight control surfaces that are also part of the impenage discussed in the next lesson of this course. This is the end of lesson 3, part 2. If you like our course please support us by liking the video and subscribe to channel. Help to see you in the next lesson about flight control surfaces. Thank you.